Okay. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to thanks, John, to the uh, May edition of our Central Region verification calls. This will be a two-parter. I'm going to give a, a summary of our uh, verification from uh, the beginning of the policy for our extended forecast process back in October and, and running through the end of April using point forecast matrix uh, verification that we get from Aquas. Let's do the next slide. Again, this will be a seven-month period for all of Central Region. And, and then compared with the past seven years from October to April. So I'm going to show you averages for a seven-year period uh, from 2004 through, uh, through 2011 and then, and then last year or the last seven-month period. This will be max T, min T, and pop 12, and then we'll go into some additional interest looking at the uh, pop 12 verification. And for simplicity, I combine both the 0 and 12Z cycles, but as you'll see, uh, that does cause some interesting noise in the verification that we'll explain. Next slide. So here is an example for uh, are the October to April seven month period for max T. And you see on the left, the pr and this will be the format for most of the talk. Uh, on the left will be the seven year period from October 2004 to April 2011. And on the right will be the previous seven months for that same period. And the scaling will be slightly different. I tried to line up the zero improvement, which would basically be we tied the MEX guidance. And the interesting uh, pattern of uh, maximum and minimum starting out uh, around period six is caused by the fact that when, I, and I believe it's still true, Back about 10, 12 years ago, when when the MEX guidance started running at 12Z, remember for many years it only ran at 0Z. When it ran at 12Z, there was some concern about comp because it wasn't consistently available or it was available later, or there was some issue where uh, the regions told Aquas they didn't want to verify us against 12Z guidance on the 12Z cycle. So what you're seeing is even on the 12Z cycle, those peaks are because we're comparing to the old 0Z guidance. So it's kind of an artificial improvement. So I would focus more on the dots at the bottom where we basically compare ourselves at the 0Z cycle on mids to, to the 0Z mix guidance. But anyhow, what you see uh, is that uh, there's a fairly obvious improvement actually throughout the uh, short term of about a percent or two, but then roughly about a f four or five percent improvement uh, over the uh, in the whole extended. Next slide. Now here is. Uh, for max T again, but this is uh, for only for periods where the 24-hour max T observed changed by at least uh, 10 Fahrenheit, either colder or warmer. So again, we're trying to represent an air mass change here. And you can see almost across the board improvements again, uh, even in the short term. Again, we the extended starts around period uh, Seven, of course, and where whereas we basically tied guidance on the zero Z cycle in these situations in the previous seven years, if you use the example of day se uh, the period seven, it was about a half a percent improvement over guidance. Uh, now we're talking about about six percent improvement, which it may it may not sound like much, but if you consider. Uh, 
the fact that this is the entire region for a seven-month period, it's a, it's a very impressive change. And the nice thing is even though we don't have a short-term yet policy, uh, especially days two to three, we're still seeing improve. We're not seeing a degradation in what we do in the short term based on this, which is another plus that it's it it seems to be neutral to positive impacts on the short term. Uh, next slide. Okay, this slide is a situation where we differed. Our forecast was at least four Fahrenheit different on max temperatures than the MEX guidance. So we deviated significantly from MEX guidance, and pretty much you see across the board improvements, whereas in the past, especially comparing the, the points on the odd numbers, 7, 9, 11, and 12, we were either similar or even lost to MEX guidance in those situations on average. Now we're talking about... Uh, 10% or more improvements, which is uh, very impressive. Next slide. Now we go to min temperature. I think you can see that there was a fairly significant advantage of MEXMOX MEX -MOX over our uh, forecast on the order of about 2%. And now uh, in, in past year, you're talking about anywhere from 5 to 8% improvements over guidance. Next slide. Here again, min temperatures changed by at least 10 degrees from the previous day, whereas in the past, typically negative 1 or 2%, so basically tying or slightly losing the guidance on these big swings. A uh, fairly consistent signal of being in anywhere from 4 to 10% better. And if you think for 10%, uh, that's about 0.5 degrees better than guidance, but that's over many, many, many forecasts over many months, so it's a fairly impressive number. Next slide. Here again, min temperature when we we're, when our forecast was at least four degrees different than MEX guidance, uh, you're seeing again the same same signal, and that signal continues into the short term. So uh, we're about five percent better than we were in the past, even in the short term. So that's uh, that's good to see. Next slide. Now we go to the POP12 forecasts. Uh, I think you're seeing about, uh, a, a, we were basically doubling our skill uh, where we were running about 1% or 2% better in the extended uh, for POPs. Uh, we're now running more like uh, 6 to as much as 10% better than uh, guidance. In the short term, there's not a lot of change, uh, especially in the first day or two. We do see some improvement on day three. And in the short term, since this is mostly over the cold season, I think what you're seeing, again, is the, is the impact of the large areas of central region that, that uh, suffer from getting the dreaded trace and the tipping bucket during uh, slight snow events. So I'm not sure it's a reflection of skill. It's just our usual problem that we have uh, with forecasting likelies or higher for snow. It snows, but then you don't get the hundredth and the gauge. Next slide. Here's situations where on days where we a wet pop where uh, at least a hundredth occurred, uh, I think. It's pretty clear that uh, on wet days, MEX moss tended to be better than us in our Briar scores in the extended, and now uh, we're similar or or much better uh, than guidance. And then again, that continues into the short term. Next slide. 
Here's situations where we forecast at least a 30 pop. Uh, see, was ba basically we were slightly worse than guidance or about a tie, especially as you got out day six and seven. Now, I know there's been a lot of discussion about us having lots of high pops in the extended, which we'll talk about more later. I think that that's only served to improve our verification based on these numbers. Next slide. Here are situations where we were significantly different with our extended pops by at least 20%. And those situations in the past, you see, for the most part, we did seem to show some skill in the past around day four. And then after that, when we differed, we tended to lose to guidance. Now you see significant improvements uh, on the order of 10 to 20 percent uh, through most of the extended. And again, in the short term, we're slightly better than we were in the past, especially around day three. But again, I think we're suffering from situations where, in, in many cases, it's in the short term, it's it's tracing out. Next. These two slides show a comparison of wet and dry pops, days when it was when it precipitated versus guidance. So what I've drawn on the top, uh, the topmost line in both of these uh, that has uh, it's green and it has uh, green triangles on it is the official forecast from Central Region on wet days. And then the moss has got the uh, little diamonds on it, mex moss. I also showed that, now I say climo during the period of 15.4% on the left and on the right, 12.9%. It's not a true climo. It's just during that period, that's the observed precip frequency. So in central region during that period, in the previous seven years, it precipitated on 15 percent of the days, and it was slightly drier than those seven years this period, a little bit drier, right around 12, 13 percent. Uh, the shaded areas indicate the spread between what we forecast and what moss forecast, and obviously on wet days we want to be higher than moss, so that it represents the shaded green area, uh, and the red area is wet days in the past on the left where we it was wet and the model was we had a higher pop than, than us. So you could see in the extended, we did pretty well in the past in the short term at, four, at going above guidance on wet days out to about day three. Then we were pretty much a tie. And then in the extended, we typically were drier than Mex Moss uh, in the extended and in some cases by approaching, you know, 3 to 5 percent. Uh, on the right, and what's interesting is it's a slightly drier period than the previous seven years if you're looking at averages. I know I'm splitting hairs a little bit of 15 percent frequency versus 13, but you can see almost every period where we are higher on wet days than the MEX guidance. So that's pretty... And there hasn't been a whole lot of change on the dry days. Uh, we, if anything, um, there seems to be, uh, you know, very similar spreads uh, on dry days. So we want to be obviously lower than moss guidance when it's dry. Next, next slide. So I did some further analysis. Uh, and this is inspired by John Gig and uh, similar to his his pop fun facts. But I looked at all of the times in Central Region where we forecast 50% uh, or greater pops in the extended. So this is only days four to seven or periods seven to 14. And again, uh, pops pops are on the left. The, the total number of forecasts in central region uh, in the last seven months, 2011, 2012, is in the third column. 
And then in the second column is not the total number in seven years, but the average per year in that period so that we can compare directly. And then on the right is the percent change from that seven-year average. And you can see almost across the board, with the exception of 100% forecasts, uh, we almost always doubled our previous frequency. And in, in the case of 80 pops, uh, two and a half times uh, more frequent. So again, over that seven-year period, for 80%, we averaged 307 total forecasts at PFM sites in the central region, and we had a total of 801 this year. So even in a slightly drier pattern, we doubled, in most cases, the amount of times that we went for, with very high pops. And as you can see by the verification, that actually improved our verification. Next slide. Here is a, you know, shows the reliability uh, of those POPs. And again, uh, on the left is the POP. And in the middle column is the observed frequency of precipitation when when we forecast a 50 pop, so a perfect forecast or perfectly calibrated, we would be 50 instead of 53.7, but that was still good. You can see that our numbers were similar uh, on 50 and 60 pop. Then you can see we were slightly better on 70 pops. And then on 80 pops, where in the past we were had uh, a, a definite wet bias where it, when we put an 80 pop, it only precipitated 66% of the time. You can see last year when we put an 80 pop, it precipitated 75% uh, of the time. So it was fairly, it was better calibrated even though we were forecasting it more frequently. And then for 90s, we had a very strong wet bias in the past. And it's, we have a slight wet bias now uh, with 90 pops verifying about 77% of the time. And we didn't, we didn't go 100 uh, this last time. And in the past, we only did it four times on average per year. As you can see, that was probably not a good idea, especially in the extended. So, uh, Pretty much across the board improvements versus GFS MEX guidance at points. This is all point guidance, not, not uh, gridded verification for MAX, Team NT, and POP 12. We showed improvements uh, when it counts on uh, rain and snow days and on days where we differ significantly from MEX guidance. Uh, we showed improvements in skill. And we doubled, nearly doubled the frequency of our high pops in the extended in a slightly drier period than in previous years. And we still improved both reliability and accuracy. So I would call this a very successful start. Now, it is just, as many people would say, it's just the first 12, uh, seven months. We might just be getting lucky. However, um, there's certainly there's certainly encouragement for us to continue this process. And uh, I will now stop, and we'll let Pete take over with his discussion. Then we can probably entertain questions at the end. OK. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Uh, Pete, John, yeah. I don't know how to do this. OK. Um, at the very top there, let me, uh, can you, can you yeah, see my little, screen? See that little chat? Thing there, click on that and just send me a quick note, and then I can turn it over to you. I'll know which viewer number you are. All right, hang on a second. Okay, hang on a second. I'm going to hang. Okay. Am I number 10? No, that's Jeff. OK, number 22. It should be coming 22. to you right now. So it says, uh, it's my time to share. John, I would like you to present. Click Download to start presenting. Is this yep. where you got 
Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll have better luck. All right, please stand by. Okay, I don't have the luck. I uh, same problem Jeff had. Okay. Okay. Very good. Is your is your presentation on MetDAT by chance? On your it's in your email. It's in my email. Okay. Hang on. Then I'll just pull it down and start that up then. I was anticipating this problem. <clears throat> It in yeah, I see it. I'm just getting it down right now. Just making sure I've got it. Okay, let me just open it and we'll be off to the races. All right. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, okay. let me introduce it. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice is <clears throat> Okay, um, some of you probably have seen this already, but <clears throat> if you haven't, I'll, I'm going to show it again. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, just a minute. <clears throat> Trying to find my voice. <clears throat> okay, um, back... Uh, Earlier this year, uh, this spring, um, I became aware of a presentation that HPC put together that compared uh, basically from January to the, through December of uh, 2011 um, verification data from um, uh, from the NDFD and so it verified uh, NDFD and uh, HPC and um, I think uh, in some of the model guidance, the, the MOS, gridded MOS, I think. And, um, and you'll see those here in a minute, exactly which ones they are. But, um, but basically, you know, they showed this, and they showed this at the corporate board, and it basically showed that, you know, um, HPC was as good or better than, you know, each of the regions. They had, uh, they had the CONUS, uh, you know, all averaged together, and then they did each region separately on that. So... <clears throat> So I, you know, I played the ref and I said, "Foul, um, why don't you do this for October, you know, through March?" And at the time, March data wasn't in, so they did. They said, "Sure," I, you know. I said, "We had changed our process, you know, uh, for our extended starting in October, and that they really should be looking at, uh, you know, just a cool season and see how that worked out." So. You know, I, I hadn't looked at the data at all. I just basically told them to, you know, just do this for me and make a, take a look at it. So they went ahead and created this presentation, and, um, and it had much different results. Uh, and I, that's why I want to go through it with you guys to just show you um, how, we, how we looked uh, compared to the other regions and compared to the uh, HPC and other model guidance. Um, this is straight out of the regular NDFD verification, so it's using... RTMA as a verifying background, uh, and they're all verified against the same grounds, uh, ground truth. So go ahead and go to the next slide here, and we'll just step through this a little bit. Here's the method. Um, again, using MDL verification, NDFD verification site. Uh, it's, it's no longer accessible outside AWIPS, but you guys can see this in your, on your AWIPS. Uh, you can go to this site and look at verification data. Uh, verification at points, max T, min T, dew point, wind speed and direction. They looked at uh, cases for greater than eight knots, which is what is typically is on the NDFD site. They didn't have to do anything special to get that. And then they only used the zero Z cycle because that's what HPC produces uh, uh, based, based on that. It's available at 1830Z, NDFD 2345, and MOS 17Z. Next slide. All right, so we got uh, we got Kona summary and then broken down by region. And then uh, and they, they were they're planning to do some changes to their wind uh, at HPC. I probably won't even go over that uh, on that. So first uh, slide in the CONUS was the max T slide here. And, and you're going to see the same layout here for all of them. So you have um, NDFD is the blue line. 
uh, and then you have MOS, HPC, and then gridded MOS on here. And um, so, um, you know, NDFD in the short term is, you know, it steps away from the MOS guidance products. HPC is right on their line in the extended period. Go ahead and next slide. MinT, similar results. The gridded MOS is really out of, out of line there <clears throat> on that. Um, you know, when, stop, stop moving the slide. I'll tell you, John. Go back, please. Okay. I'll the MinT slide. Okay. MinT slide. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think, you know, watch for this. I, this. You look at this and you wonder, uh, you know, the gridded MOS, uh, I guess it isn't as, uh, as what we had hoped it would be, uh, you know, when they went to a gridded MOS. Uh, definitely an outlier to to uh, to the other guidance, including NDFD. So, okay, go ahead forward. Next slide is POP12, uh, and we can see uh, CONUS as a whole. Um, you know, the NDFD is outperforming the uh, the rest of the guidance in the extended period here. Uh, a couple notches off of H, just barely off of HPC is the second best. Um, you know, frankly, when I saw the uh, 2011 as a whole, and I wish I, I guess I should have pulled those together, to compare uh, these these lines were right on each other here. So, uh, so there's a little difference noted here for just the winter season. Next slide. Okay, dew point, similar results here. HPC is actually uh, uh, has better scores uh, in the extended here. Next slide. Um, wind speed. Um, it actually shows the MOS guidance uh, and gridded MOS uh, performing better than HPC and NDFD. Next slide. And wind direction, they're all on, online. HPC is the worst performer on that. Okay, so let's step through. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. I think we take us to uh, the different regions. And I'm gonna, I want to go through these pretty quickly here. So I uh, just want to show that you know, we have basically a strong clustering. Uh, NDFD is uh, in the extended here. Is you know, it's, it's really tightly clustered. There's no real winner here. Uh, next slide. Uh, Min T. Uh, you see the gridded moss again as a big outlier in the Min T. But again, there's no real winner. Uh, uh, HPC, NDFD, moss are all right on the same line here. Next slide. Uh, Pop 12. HPC and NDFD uh, are basically tied here. I think you know it's probably a strong reliance on HPC uh, forecasts, uh, you know, in the extended in the eastern region. Next slide. And similarly, uh, next slide. And the same kind of uh, same kind of pattern here. Next slide. So uh, in the wind direction. Everybody's using the same guidance, it looks like. Next slide. <clears throat> All right, so our region. Um, so for max temperature, the uh, NDFD, uh, you know, we're pretty, at this, from the zero-z run only, uh, it's pretty close to the HPC forecast here. <clears throat> the other the guidance products are, are uh, both, um, you know, it's not clustered. It's a, it's a step away uh, from the... Uh, HPC and, and uh, Central Region NDFD. Next slide. The MIN-T, you know, NDFD is basically the winner here, but uh, very close with HPC. The guidance products really, I mean, the gridded moss MIN-T, uh, it's just really bad this last winter. I'm not sure if it's just the se this one season or whether it's been consistently bad, and maybe folks, some of you guys have comments on that. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the this is the slide that really excited me when I saw it. Um, this is the POP12, and and again, this goes along with what Jeff was showing uh, in some of the changes that we've made with the POPs and our extended and and uh, the forecasts that the you know you guys are in the central region offices have been making this last winter uh, in the extended. I mean, basically, we stepped away from the other guidance products, including HPC. Uh, you know, with a, a better Briar score in the extended period here, uh, about 72 hours on on here, um, and we don't see this in any other region. Uh, with, with if you looked at, we didn't see it in the eastern region charts. And if I, 
I'm not sure I want to bore you with all the, the southern and western, but we can run through them really quick. You'll see them all clustered uh, again like we had been. So I, I really, I, I'm really quite thrilled. Uh, I, think, I think what we've done in the extended process is really taking a big step forward, improving our skill. And it's showing here because we've basically moved away from the, the skill of HPC and, and the guidance that you know, we have available for us. Next slide. Uh, dew points are, again, also uh, quite good uh, compared to guidance. Uh, it's better than HPC, uh, except in the very end periods here, but only marginally better. But, but uh, again, we, you know, Central Region is the winner here. Next slide. The wind speeds are pretty well clustered here. Uh, again, and I think that's an area where we can work, uh, you know, maybe focus some energy on improving our tools, perhaps to uh, to, to do a little better uh, with the wind speed forecast on that. So they're pretty well clustered with the guidance, but uh, HPC is the outlier here. So they're definitely recognizing that problem that they have with the wind speed forecast. Next slide. Wind direction, uh, Central Region is, is uh, the winner on this one. Next slide. Okay, so just I'll just step through the other two regions really quickly, uh, just so you can see that, you know, we. Ours are, you know, I think our, we're showing the best scores uh, compare, you know, when you break out the regions um, compared to HPC and the other guidance products, well, all the other regions are pretty well clustered in with the guidance and with HPC. So Max T in the southern region, next slide. Min T, uh, again, clustered right in with Moss and so is southern region, next slide. Um, Pop 12 all together, next slide. Dew point, uh, HPC is a winner. Uh, Southern region is following guidance, looks like. Next slide. Wind speed, um, you know, Southern region is actually the worst on this one here. So, uh, next slide. And again, uh, wind direction, it's HPC and NDFD trailing the MOS guidance. Next slide. And this will be Western region, you know, quickly. And then similar clustering here, next slide. Same here. Uh, looks like the the uh, moss is is better than uh, is, was the winner in the minty uh, red moss way out outside there. Next slide. Pop twelve. Um, the southern uh, western region is doing doing well with uh, with pop twelve in the extended period there, and uh, they've made a, a similar uh, effort. Um, you know, we did it through our you know all blend and our smarter nets to improve our pops. By providing a pop in the in the model guidance, and we, you know, granted our smarter nets aren't the smartest smarter nets, but they're providing you know uh, uh, some guidance that's being uh, actually reflecting positively on what we're doing. What's the region that's focused on, uh, you know, trying to raise awareness with with storms uh, approaching storms and the extended. Uh, you know, they're basically focusing on uh, atmospheric rivers uh, with a lot of moisture coming in on the west coast. They're Trying to get the uh, FOs to uh, pick up on that well in advance and to uh, you know provide higher pops in the extended on that, and I think that's what we're seeing as a reflection of that. Their efforts uh, in trying to you know they actually do you know um, office briefings on <clears throat> on coming events in real time um, um, and, and, and anticipating these these larger events that are, that are you know hit the west coast and that. So I think. I think we're seeing that kind of effort uh, is showing up in their skill, and so they're showing good skill there as well. Next slide. The dew point uh, is, is awful uh, compared to the other sources of guidance. Uh, next slide. And uh, wind speed, just like us, uh, is not as not that good. Uh, and so uh, I'm not sure there's anything left here to look at. Uh, what's the next slide? Okay, wind direction again on that. So I wanted to—I just wanted to quickly show this as a, again as another source of information. Uh, HPC put this together, um, and um, you know I think you know I was afraid that they were going to try. You know they were starting to make a case for uh, you know where do we need to do uh, the extended forecast? Uh, and HPC is talking about doing it twice a day now. Uh, and spinning that up uh, for for the extended forecast period. Um, I mean, the reason 
the large reason reason we went twice a day is that we're we're seeing that we're improving our skill. Our skills, you know, was taking a dip, and we didn't update it twice a day uh, as new model guidance was available. Um, and so um, they're going to do that. So I think when you, um, you know, we'll see how their methods improve. But I, I, when they immediately generated this, you know, I got a call from Dave Novak, who's the uh, is there at HPC now. Uh, Wanting more information about what we're doing, you know, and, I, and that was really quite satisfying to to get, because uh, you know they could see that we've made a difference. In the past years, when I looked at these same charts, um, you know, I, the central region numbers were always, you know, overall I think were over oh, it was usually the worst in that. And I always attributed that to uh, the variability, the high variability of weather we have in our large region. We have the largest region, the most offices in a, a you know, quite a quite a range from uh, mountain issues to Great Lakes issues and that. And so I always, you know, always attributed it to that. But when now I look at what we've done since October, um, you know, I I got to say that we've made quite an improvement region wide. These are region wide averages. I think if you look at similar graphs from uh, from your offices, I, it, you know, your results may vary, obviously, uh, but uh, it's well worth looking at. And uh, you know, I think if we break down our region into subregions, you know, like if we looked at the Northern Plains and Central Plains and Great Lakes and that, I think we'll see some variability as well in skill uh, on that, and that would be interesting to do. But I just wanted to share this with you all because, because I, you know, I, I, we've made a difference in uh, forecast skill in Central Region in the extended periods uh, since October, and it's showing up in the verification data. <clears throat> So um, I guess we can open up the floor for questions then. Okay. Any questions for uh, Jeff or Pete? Pete, there's, uh, there's a question. Uh, John, there's a question in the uh, chat. Chat. Yes, I yeah. see that. It says, playing the devil's advocate here, but are Though these differences enough to justify the redundant efforts at every WFO, couldn't the blending techniques be ported to HPC so they can have the improvement? They too can have the improvement. Well, you know, on a daily basis, uh, they do uh, blend. They they do blend uh, models, uh, but um, but I think you know basically the forecasters are making choices about what percentages. Of a blend they use, and they vary that I think on a daily basis. Um, so, um, you know, I think I think the technique is is a big plus in, in what we're doing here. But I, I also feel, uh, and maybe that this is not as working as well as I, you know, as we had hoped it would. But I also feel that the collaboration and the local, you know, the local input to this is is a key as well. Um, you know, you guys, you know, you're looking at model data and various models, and then you get the blended forecast. You can go with it. You can just accept it and move on. Uh, but when you have a storm coming in where it's where it matters, where it's going to rain, on that, um, you know, I think we also still add value to that. So I think by by giving us a good place to collaborate, the good starting point that we're, uh, you know, we're able to um, improve our skill. Um, so I don't know how that would play out in a central location. I mean, I guess it still could work that way. Um, <clears throat> well, it wouldn't work that way. It would, they would basically just provide a forecast, but they would, you know, they would be free to adjust from a from a consensus approach. But I think the consensus approach is showing itself as being uh, useful and, and helpful. Uh, I'm not sure how well collaboration is working at your offices and whether that's adding another layer of skill to this or not. Uh, that's that's hard to measure. Hey Pete, this is Rob and Cheyenne. Yeah, Rob. Um, I noticed HPC when I was there that they use still use a five kilometer grid. Is other regions still using the five kilometer grid in GFE? Um, I think there probably are still some offices that are, but but I think there are very few now. I think most most of us have started moving to two and a half. You know, we did it region wide here. I think Southern Region might still have a few. I don't think they did a region wide effort, but I think offices migrated to two and a half. 
on that. So but that's a good point. And, and this NDFD verification is at the five kilometer, I believe, level. NDFD is still five kilometers. Okay, thanks. Hey, Pete. Yeah. The, the uh, one comment I have is about the moss, and I know you're concerned about the minimum temperature. The, the only thing I can think of in that case is that since the the uh, the winter was really so anomalous that uh, really they didn't have anything in their development database that would be close to what happened this winter, so that might be an explanation as to why the winter uh, cold or the cold season minimum equations didn't work out so well. And uh, well, then the question might be, well, why did the warm ones do better? And uh, it really probably has to do with the, the predictors and, and what it's using. And, and I can tell you that. Uh, the set for the max and the set for the minimum are, are completely different, and the ones that are the minimums uh, are quite sensitive to uh, uh, diurnal type things at night, and so that might be a reason why uh, that was the case. So just figured I'd throw that out there. Yeah, uh, if you can go to the main T one, John. Um, you know, I guess the. Um, I guess what puzzles me a little bit is that you know they had moss and gridded moss on this chart here, and and the the moss, which I, I'm, I assume that's the point moss, you know, is performed better, uh, and the gridded moss is just a whole step away, you know, it's almost a whole degree away uh, in error right across the board. So, um, you know, I guess. Um, so it almost it almost looks like there's some kind of a systematic error or something. I don't. I'm not sure. Other than equations, you know. I mean, it's the same. I mean, gridded moss is based on the moss. Well, yeah, but the developments are different. I mean, they when they do their uh, multiple linear regression to that or whatever they're using now, they use a sample size that their their sample could be different. Um, and so, just be careful with that. Yeah, okay. I mean, they are separate developments. It would be interesting to see if this persists or, or we see this uh, in uh, any kind of a signal like this in the warm season or again next next winter. Pete, what did you say was used as the verification for the slides you showed? The NDFD. Uh, Verification website that NDL runs uses RTMA. Okay. Again, it's all five kilometer uh, still. So, any questions for Jeff's presentation? Uh, yeah, this is Scott in uh, Aberdeen. We have uh, a question actually on both presentations. Uh, we wouldn't mind seeing it compared to the EC database. Indeed. <laughs> um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe HPC. I wonder if HPC has some verification data there. I mean, I'll ask. Uh, I'll ask and see if we can if they have anything to work with. That'd be great. I don't. I, I think if you show that, though, we may throw out a lot of the members of All Blend and just put in European and European moss. For those of you that have seen some of the early results from the European moss, uh, <laughs> it's it's quite impressive. And I, I don't think anybody is really surprised by that, but um. hey, Jeff, along those lines, um, I've got the the, the adjusted uh, European moss running out here in Riverton, but the max and min temp grids look horrid. They're not terrain adjusted at all. Do if I do you think I've missed something? In my smart in it set up. I'm I'm not a good one to ask about that. Um, okay, maybe I'll throw yeah. some images at 
Jerry and Eric and see. Because my hourly temp grids from the EC look really nice, but the max and min temp grids look horridly crude still. Hey, Brett, this is Jerry. Hey. Um, one thing I guess I didn't look... Did you use my installation? Yes. I guess one thing I didn't look at is this could be a part of the problem. There is an elevation adjustment in the match guidance code. I'm wondering right. if that wasn't turned on for the European, um, the, well, the adjusted European product. That could be part of the problem. But I do know that the background field for the European is pretty coarse itself. Um, right. So using a coarse grid and putting in stations, and you're in Riverton, and I don't believe there's a whole lot of stations in that area, um, it may produce a pretty coarse grid. But what's got me curious is you said that the temperature looks pretty good. Um, yeah, Eric Toller something to use with the EC on the hourly temperature grids, and, and it, it basically does that sweet terrain adjustment, and it makes them much more realistic. So okay. I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to apply that to the max and min temp grids as well. I, I can look into it. I'll look into it too, thanks. It went up. And, um, I've been talking to uh, Becky Cosgrove at uh, um, NCO of, um, about the European issue, and um, she's going to try to move it up an hour in, in this distribution, AWIPS, uh, next month. Um, we looked into, you know, why does HPC get it an hour before we do? And we found out that there was a, uh, you know, the way it got implemented, it was sort of piecemeal. HPC had it for a while, then they then they created uh, uh, NAWIPS grids. Um, so the processing, you know, distributed it and then created NAWIPS grids and distributed them. And then when we got it, it put on the AWIPS, they just tacked it on to the end of the job. And so it basically spends an hour, you know, creating these NAWIPS grids, and then it, and then it sends it to us. So uh, she's just going to change the order of that so that contributed to AWIPS right away, uh, along with HPC. Um, and so we putting that in for uh, sometime in June. So we'll, we'll watch to see if that that gets done and and uh, let everyone know when that happens. So I could get it to us about an hour earlier. <clears throat> Because we, you can see with the ensemble technique how much improvement we had using a 12-hour old European. Just think what would happen if we can actually incorporate the current run in. It would. You're probably talking about another two to three tenths of a degree improvement in mean absolute error. So that would be that would be very very interesting. Yeah, I, it would be a very tight schedule though to get that done, but. You know, it's coming in still at right when you need to run all the processes and collaborate. So we'll have to look at how we can adjust for that. But hopefully we can. I would be great to use a new one. Okay, very good. Uh, any last-minute questions for Jeff or Pete? Okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, we will have these available for everybody, including the recording, and we'll see you next month. Thank you.